This is Earth, the year 2100. This is the headquarters of Space Patrol. And men from Earth, Mars, and Venus live and work there as guardians of peace. Will you play with me? I'm working. Let me help you. No, thanks. You're too stupid. I'm not stupid. I'm the cleverest Martian parrot in the universe. Still the same old conceited gabbler. I'm not conceited. I'm brilliant. Look at this. What is it? A new material called kinetine. It was invented by a man called Mason. What's special about it? Once it's heated to a certain temperature, it retains that heat no matter what the temperature is around it. So anyone wearing a suit of this could live in the North Pole or the equator without feeling any difference. Exactly. What do you want me to do with it? Test it and tell me if what Mason said about it is true. Kinetine. Sounds like a miracle. <laughs> Captain Dart is calling you on the sonar beam. Put him on. With alacrity. We finished our routine flight around Venus, and we'd like to spend a few days leave there. Very well, but don't make it more than a long weekend. Cut speed, Slim. We're going into land. I am joyous to be returning home. stay at my parents' home? Not this time, thanks. Husky and I want to go exploring. Then you must visit the Silver Forest. It is the most wondrous sight on my planet. The Silver Forest it is. <laughs> this kinetine does everything you said it would. Marla, I want to talk to Dr. Mason. I bet he'll ask a fortune for this formula. Dr. Mason is on the screen. Well, Colonel, what do you think of Kinotine? It's fantastic. And the United Galactic Organization wants to buy the formula from you. It's not for sale. What? No, Colonel. But I'd be delighted to give you the rights for nothing. <laughs> I never expected this. I'll see that the UGO knows of your great generosity. Now, when can you let us have that formula? I'll bring it next Tuesday. Well, Professor? What do you think of that? I always knew scientists were the most generous people on Earth. Look, there's the Silver Forest. never seen anything so fantasticacious. What makes it glitter? Nobody knows. It's funny, but I can't hear any noise. There's nothing to hear. The Silver Forest has no bird or animal life. That's strange. I thought I saw something move. I wish I knew why everything glittered. Ugh. Ah, ah, I'm caught. Dot, get me. 
get your gun. Quick, quick. Captain, hurry. I'm coming. I can't get out. Quick, save me. It's all right, Husky. It's dead. What was it? I don't know. We'd better report it. Get up. I can't. This web is like steel. You're right. I can't even break it. I'll have to radio for help. Captain Larry Dart calling Space Headquarters Cresta. We need a stretcher and a hovercraft. Husky is unable to move. Help will be dispatched immediately. It appears that Husky encountered a spiricum spider. Nobody has seen one on Venus for 50 years. Have any other people ever been covered by this cobweb? I believe so. But it was many years ago, and I don't think they were ever able to remove it. Where is Husky now? On a stretcher in the Gallosphere. I'd better call Colonel Rayburn and tell him what's happened. Husky can't get out of a cobweb. <laughs> this isn't April Fool's Day. I'm not joking. That web is tougher than plastic steel. Then bring him to Earth and put him into Space Hospital. Very well. <laughs> up by a cobweb. It's ridiculous. I want all my troops to have kinetine uniforms. Then we can camp out under any conditions. They can even serve as insulation in houses and cut down on atomic heating. When is uh, Mason giving you the formula? Tomorrow. that Husky goes to hospital. He is already there. I'm sure you'll be out of this web by tomorrow. I hope so. Don't worry, Husky. I heard what was wrong, and I'm sure I can help you. Stop it. You're biting me. I'm trying to break the web. You'll never do it. You're right, but don't worry, I'll get you out soon. I'm the cleverest... Be quiet. I wonder if all Gabaledictum parrots are as conceited as he is. If they are, we wouldn't know about it. He's the only one Professor Haggerty's taught to speak English. Hello, Professor. What have you got there? Some instruments. We can't cut this web for me to examine in my lab, so I'll have to look at it here. <laughs> Yes, mm. yes, most interesting. Colonel Rayburn wishes to know if you have solved the problem. Yes, I have. Uh, tell him to come to me lab and I'll explain it. Come on, Dart, you might as well hear it too. What about me? Just lie there and don't worry. <laughs> Come on, Professor. What's making the web so strong? Wait till Rayburn comes and I'll tell you. There you are. Now, look at this diagram. As you know, everything's made up of molecules. Now, sometimes these molecules arrange themselves into precise patterns, like this. And you always find this kind of pattern in crystals. Like sugar and salt? Yes. Each granule of sugar is a crystal, and if you put a granule under a microscope, 
That's the pattern you'll see. A few hundred years ago, an Italian scientist discovered that you could sometimes alter molecules into straight lines. And if you did that, they became extremely strong. And is this the pattern that the molecules have made in the web? Yes, it is. Does that mean Husky will be wrapped in that web forever? Oh, no, no. If we freeze the web, it'll make the crystals brittle. Then if we expose the crystals to a shortwave radio current, they'll snap. Shortwave radio current? That gives out such heat it'll kill Husky. Not if we freeze him first. Then, when we apply the heat, all it'll do will be to bring him back to normal in a couple of seconds. It'll also cause the web to snap. Putting it like that sounds simple. Let's hope it works. Well, Husky's completely frozen. Let's switch on the shortwave radio cage. Are you sure this will work? Of course it will. It worked. You're wonderful, Professor. Ah, it was nothing. I'll take some of this back to my lab and do a few experiments with it. The web around Husky has been broken. You can always rely on Haggerty to be successful. What's the time, Marla? Three o'clock. Find out what's happened to Mason. He was supposed to bring me the formula for kinetine today. What's that powder? That's the web. I've crushed it so that I can examine it more closely. Let me help you. I'm so clever, I can do anything. Oh, do be quiet. Now, where's an empty test tube? Hmm. It looks like sugar. Delicious. Leave that alone. I only tasted a bit of it. Well, go away. You can't help me. I know. I can't help anybody. I'm too stupid. What did you say? I said I'm stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. Hello, Gabbler. Are you helping the professor? I'm too stupid to help anybody. What's happened to Gabbler? He's telling the truth about himself. I have a feeling it's the powder. Gabbler ate some, and ever since, he's been telling the truth. I wouldn't mind having some of that. Can you give me a tube of it? What do you want it for? I'll put it in the medical kit in the Gallosphere. It might come in useful. Can I go in the Gallosphere with you? Birds aren't allowed there. But I'm a special bird. I'm the cleverest Martian bird in the universe. Oh, dear. The effect of that stuff's worn off. Have a little more, Gabbler. No, thanks. I don't like telling everyone how stupid I am when I know I'm clever. Yes, Colonel? I've had bad news. Mason isn't going to give me the formula for kinetine after all. I've just heard he left for Mars in a private rocket ship three days ago. Do you want me to go to Mars and see him? We don't know where he is. We must wait till he contacts us. But you'd better stand by. Looks as though Mason's going to sell the formula to the highest bidder. There is a call on the sonar beam for you. Is it Mason? No, it is a Mr. Kulig. He owns the largest chemical plant on Mars. Put him on. I'm real glad you've taken my call, Colonel. I got something of interest to sell you. A special material called kinetine. That's Dr. Mason's invention. Yeah, he's uh, sold the rights to me. Where's Mason now? He's resting at my country home. But when he returns, I'll ask him to call you. I have a better plan. I'll send a space patrol crew to see him. By all means. But uh, let me remind you that the formula's for sale, and I want one million Martian francs. Marla, tell... Uh, Captain Dart is already on the screen. You want us to go to Mars, sir? Yes. See if you can find out why Mason changed his mind about the formula. I have a feeling he was kidnapped. If he was, Kolig wouldn't let us meet him. I know. That's why I'm puzzled. We'll leave for Mars at once. Orbital speed zero to 20,000 miles an hour. Speed maintained. Astro beam working. Check. Scanner viewer working. Check. Gamma rays on. Yoba rays on. All in order, Captain. Gallosphere 347 is cleared for takeoff. 
Thank you, Marla. Takeoff program starting now. Why did you agree to let a space patrol crew talk to Mason? I was playing for time. We have the formula, and now we gotta get rid of him. How? A little accident. Bring him in here, and then fix the rocket so that it explodes when it's taken off. <laughs> oh, you are clever. It's a pity about Mason. Eh, there's no other way. Ah. Dr. Mason, I've uh, decided to let you leave. You mean I'm free? Yeah, and I wish to apologize to you. I was wrong to try and make you sell the formula to me. Is this another of your tricks? See for yourself. A rocket is waiting outside, and you can leave whenever you wish. You can reach the Martian capital in an hour, and from there, you can catch a flight to Earth. I'm glad you changed your mind, Koelig. Goodbye. What fools these scientists are. He's gone. He won't get far. You did a good job. Now we'll have to tell Space Patrol how sorry we are that Dr. Mason is not here to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> We are approaching Mars. Prepare for landing. Do you wish me to come with you to see Dr. Mason? No, you and Husky wait here. I hope Dart lets me leave the Galosphere. I want to get some Martian sausages. You are always thinking of your stomach. It's a nice thought. Captain Larry Dart is here to see ya. Ah, Captain. I uh, regret I've had bad news for you. Dr. Mason was flying to the Martian capital when his rocket exploded. So now you'll have to talk business with me. You mean Mason left you the rights to his formula? Yeah. I want a million Martian francs for it. I'm sure Rabin is giving you permission to sign an agreement on his behalf. And once you've done that, the formula is yours. Very well, I'll sign. I'll have the documents prepared. Can we sign them at the President's Palace? What for? Well, buying this kinetine is of universal importance. And Rayburn always likes these sort of things to be televised. But why go to the Martian Palace? The palace is on the Universal Television Circuit. And we want all the planets to see the signing. Very well. I'll meet you at the palace tomorrow. So you believe Koenig killed Dr. Mason? Yes, Mr. President, I do. That's why I want you to help me with my plan. Are you sure this powder will work? Yes. Then we will try it. I will arrange for all TV circuits to be on, so that every station on Mars, Earth, and Venus can see what takes place in this room. Captain Dart has requested that all television stations watch the signing of the document. I never gave Dart permission to buy the formula. He must be out of his mind. Captain Dart says he has a plan. He'd better have. Otherwise, I'll deduct that million francs from his pay. And he'll get nothing for the next hundred years. Now, Captain, the uh, documents are ready. All you need to do is just sign them. Now you're a million francs richer. <laughs> <laughs>
We must have a drink to celebrate. What shall the toast be? I think we ought to drink the poor Mason who died so tragically. That is a good toast. This is uh, unusually sweet, but uh, very good. Now, uh, if you'll forgive me, Mr. President, I must return to my chemical plant. I have uh, many things to do. Have another drink first. No, thanks. I... Uh... Hey, I feel most peculiar. Sit down and rest. How do you feel now? Uh, a little dizzy. Maybe you're still upset over Mason's accident. It was no accident. I... I killed him. You killed him? Yeah. Why did Mason give you the formula? He didn't give it to me. I kidnapped him and stole it. Well, sir, now you know the truth. And so does everyone else on Earth, Mars and Venus. My head. I... I... How strange. I... I feel normal again. I must return to my home. I'm afraid not. You are under arrest. What for? The murder of Dr. Mason. You have just confessed to it. I... I was ill. I, I didn't know what I was saying. You were given a truth drug and everyone heard your confession. But the agreement. You, you signed it. An agreement made with a murderer is worthless. Your possessions are now the property of Mars, and the formula will be given to Rayburn as Mason wished. Well, Colonel, I hope you are delighted with what has happened. I certainly am. Tell Dart to return to Earth immediately. There's a medal waiting for him. So, we have the formula after all, thanks to the truth drug. It isn't a drug that any woman should take. Why not? If women told men the truth, men would hate it. As Husky would say, you've said a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs>